is very important to the agriculture industry in Texas. Probably a, a third of the uh, uh, immigrants coming into the United States are involved in agriculture. So uh, we're a big player in that. Commissioner Miller and I definitely have. Texas Agriculture Commissioner facing a well-funded challenger in next week's Republican Party primary. Texas Tribune reporter Alana Rocha following some hot races statewide and here in North Texas. She joins us live from Austin. You wouldn't think agriculture commissioner would be a high profile race, but in Texas, you know, outside of the urban areas, it's a big deal. But a lot of people, yeah, know Sid Miller's name and he stayed in the headlines in his first term, maybe for, for some headlines he didn't want. Um, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's been an interesting race. It was interesting to sit across from both of them and, and hear their perspectives on their priorities for the issues or for the agency rather. Um, but yeah, and it, it's really going to be interesting to see how competitive it stays because uh, our recent poll with the University of Texas showed that 60 percent of likely voters are still undecided in this race. Right. And, and Blocker, uh, a former lobbyist, it, where, it, we heard both of them in that look, quick little clip talking about immigration. Where do they both fall on the, on the issue? Uh, Blocker uh, wants to limit legal immigration and doesn't want to talk about a guest worker program, whereas uh, Sid Miller uh, pretty much aligned himself with um, President Trump, not talking so much about the, the scaling back on the legal immigration, but he's very much for the wall. And, um, you know, along those lines, he is for a guest worker program, at least he said in our interview. Okay. And, and a third candidate who's a former Democrat, uh, Jim Hogan, on there as well. Let's talk about the uh, land commissioner, right. another statewide elected office that a lot of people saw as a yeah. launching pad for George P. Bush, yes, of that Bush family. Uh, he faces yeah. the former uh, commissioner, the guy who used to have that job, Jerry Patterson, a fellow Republican. He wants his seat back and, and has been critical of... Uh, his uh, of George P's uh, handling of the office with the Alamo, particularly with Hurricane Harvey and providing temporary housing assistance to victims of that storm. Uh, yeah, Patterson hasn't been uh, short on his attacks of George P and George P has been largely absent. We have been uh, doing some investigative reporting showing some missteps he's had in, in reporting certain uh, financial disclosures yeah. and things like that, but um, we haven't really heard from him. But, you know, yes, the Bush name, people know it, but it's not what it used to be. Well, let's talk about uh, three uh, Senate district races that, uh, that touch on, on parts of North Texas. District 30, tiny parts of Denton and Collin County, and then way out in the country up to the Red River, State Representative Pat Fallon trying to unseat State Senator Craig Estes in uh, District 30, and it's a battle over who is more conservative? Yeah, and uh, Representative Fallon just got the endorsement of uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. So Patrick, like Abbott, has done in the House with endorsing some primary challengers of sitting uh, Republicans in that chamber. He's endorsing against a sitting senator, um, you know, just saying that he hasn't voted with him in certain things. And so he is endorsing uh, Representative Fallon, which, which is good for for Fallon, but this also comes after uh, Patrick gave Fallon's campaign some $17,000 of an in-kind donation for polling, and that's made this a race especially bitter. Right. One uh, District uh, 8, State Senate District 8, is nasty. You have seen, whether or not you live in the district, you've been seeing the TV ads. Angela Paxton, wife of the Attorney General, Phil Huffines, whose uh, twin brother is already in the State Senate, and it's a, it's a uh, once again, uh, a, a nasty, highly funded uh, battle between two Republicans who pretty much agree on everything. Yeah, and I mean, with the familial ties and then Dan Patrick wading into this one again uh, by endorsing Angela Paxton, again, not the twin brother of a sitting member. Um, so, yeah, that, that's adding to the tensions. I believe I just saw Angela Paxton tweet overnight that uh, the Collin County precinct chair had switched their endorsement from Huffines to her campaign because of some of the nasty attacks that have been going on really since before she got in the race. All right. It is fascinating to watch, and uh, it, will, it will soon be over. Early voting uh, ending yeah. on Friday, then election, or primary election day. And then we get to ramp up to, to the, uh, the general election. You can find more information, a link to Alana's reporting on the Texas Tribune and to the Tribune on fox4news.com. As always, thanks.